Welcome to the LA Goals podcast, Success Uncovered, featuring LA's most successful game changers. I'm your host for today, Essie Magic. And today we have a special guest, Alexis Schomer, who's going to be discussing how to use Instagram to get leads for your business. Welcome, Alexis. Thanks so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here and get into this topic today. Yeah, and it's something that's very valuable, especially during this time where people are, are may, might not be getting as many leads um, as usual. Uh, so let's get right into it. First off, tell everyone about your business and what you do. Yeah, absolutely. So I run a digital marketing agency called Simply Branded, and we do everything from the early stages with branding and logo design to website development to um, ongoing services like social media management, um, SEO, Facebook ads, things like that. So it's really a full spectrum digital marketing agency helping with everything from branding to advertising. Cool. Can you tell us a little bit about what made you decide to get into that business as well as uh, your, your history in, in marketing? Yeah, absolutely. So back in um, 2016, I co-founded my first tech startup. And um, in the startup world, you know, as entrepreneurs, we're hustling and bustling, we're bootstrapping. So we didn't really have funding to hire an outside agency. And I had already been doing some mar digital marketing myself, like making some fa friend and family websites, doing some logo design. So I decided to kind of handle all of the marketing for the startup. And um, because of that, we started to get attention from other companies and other um, entrepreneurs that were kind of in our community. And they approached and asked us who did our marketing. So I shared that I did it and then they asked for help and it kind of organically grew into a new business of its own. So I've been helping other startups and small businesses ever since. Um, absolutely love it. And just been, you know, learning, learning more and more as I go. And um, I pretty much never turned down a, a client because I love the opportunity to learn about a new industry or a new service that they need. So it's been just a, an organic kind of growth of, in and of itself. And it's been like a really fun journey along the way. Yeah, that's really interesting because I know the transition from, you know, working for a startup to it seems like you kind of changed the startup a little bit. Um, that can be really difficult in terms of, of getting clients, depending on what your startup was before, if it didn't relate to getting clients or whatever it was, maybe it was a tech product or whichever. Um, can you talk about that transition, that early stage of when you're trying to get clients, uh, when it's pretty much dry, I guess you can say, <laughs> uh, when you're like starting from scratch and, and you're trying to get leads? Can you talk yeah. about that? Yeah, absolutely. So a little, a little more background on that. It was a healthcare tech company, so definitely unrelated. Um, right. And, and the, the funny thing is that I actually still have a healthcare tech startup uh, on, on the side. So what's, what's interesting is that our strategy for funding our startup is, is the marketing agency to bring in the money so that we can keep the lights on while we're still in the bootstrapping stage of the startup. So cool. I've always been like in the entrepreneur stage. Um, I, I, I run the digital marketing agency, so I'm kind of full in on this, but I've always kind of had that, the balance between both companies. And in the early stages, it's definitely a challenge getting clients because it's like the chicken or the egg situation. You need money to um, like to put into marketing, but then, you know, the clients want to see past, you know, track records and same, and you need investors. And it's just like, you need one to get the other, but they all want to see that you have the other one first. Yep. So, we've seen that before. <laughs> some, some hacks for uh, startups that are still bootstrapping. Um, the, you can definitely get clients. You just have to put in the time and energy. And something that has been an, um, an amazing like option lately is social media, because especially with the quarantine, people being at home, social media usage has increased like exponentially. And so you have all these people that are scrolling on Instagram, scrolling on Facebook, scrolling on TikTok, and businesses have the opportunity now more than ever to capitalize on that, on that like exposure and publicity through these social media platforms. So w one of my um, tips and advices is to get on those social media platforms, even if it's organic, like posting and engaging and connect with people that way to turn them into leads. Got it. So let's, uh, you, you mentioned kind of the industry. So this is a good lead into my next question. Um, can you talk about just the, this, the social media industry in general? Because I already thought, or we probably say this every year, but I already thought that, oh, it's so saturated. It's so hard to grow now. It's so hard to get ahead on social media. Um, can you just talk about this, the state of the industry and how you assess it um, in order to uh, grow your business and just any sort of trends and things you're noticing 
happening in, in 2020? Yeah, um, so I think that there's a common misconception when you talk about growth on social media and people think that in order to be successful, you need to have 20,000 followers or more, you know. But really what it's about is about building authentic connections with people and social media gives you that personal that personal channel to connect um, on a one-on-one -on -one level. So especially platforms like Instagram where every individual has a profile and even businesses have profiles, you have the opportunity to connect with people like that where you can direct message, you can um, like comment on posts, you can watch stories. So it's, if, you want success, if you want to be successful in your sales and marketing, you need to be authentic in your messaging and really connect with people. And that's the purpose of social media and people forget that and they just, they focus on um, like how many likes did I get? It's like, well, it's not about the likes. It's about, are you turning those likes into clients? And you do that by building these relationships with people. Got it. Um, so can you take us through a little bit of some of the obstacles that uh, you find companies face in terms of, of using social media and Instagram? Yeah. And especially um, not only companies, but I would say even solopreneurs that are doing everything themselves. I think one of the biggest obstacles is consistency and having enough time. So in order to be successful on social media, you need to be posting consistently. You need to be responding to messages. You need to be reaching out to new people. And the common obstacles that I hear is like, I don't have enough time to do it, or we don't have the budget to allocate um, to, for a team to be consistent on social media. So between those two, like time and consistency, those are the two biggest obstacles. Got it. And I think people also, aren't really aware or maybe they don't believe how important social media is. Um, can you give some details how, cause you have a full service agency. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be great if you can kind of relate the social media to the many aspects of a business, whether it be email marketing or influencer marketing or whichever, uh, you've mentioned Facebook ads and all that. I think if you could emphasize the importance of social media and how it kind of weaves in with those other parts, it would be really helpful for the listeners at uh, home. Definitely. So something that is a trend in terms of advertising and uh, customer like buying decisions is the fact that people want to buy from companies that they can relate to or that have um, a good mission that they like. You know, it's, it's beyond just the cheapest, fastest product now. It's especially with millennials, millennials want to buy products from companies that are doing good in the world. And they also want to work for companies like that as well. So through social media, you have the opportunity to kind of share like on a deeper level, your mission or things like that. And so it's, once again, it's about connecting with people and you can do that easier on social media than you can through um, advertising and other platforms because an advertisement is so pushy and it's in your face and you know that they're trying to sell you something. On social media, you can connect in an authentic way and build a relationship and then have like the sales come as a um, kind of like as a, an effect of the relationship that you've been nurturing. So that's why social media is so important because you're connecting with people on a personal level and building that trust and, until you can funnel them through your sales cycle. Got it. And when you say personal, how, how personal are we talking? <laughs> um, is it, uh, you know, if, if somebody messages you and they, they have a very direct question or they have a specific example, like, do you answer? Do you reach out? Uh, that'd be great if you can give more details there. Yeah, a hundred percent. You should be responding to all mess incoming messages. Um, that's also another mistake that I've seen some, some people make is they let their DMs get full, you know, they get busy, but if you're not responding to clients that are in your inbox, what are you doing? Like you're missing out on those opportunities and people coming in, which is called like inbound traffic, whether it's to your website or social media, they are already seeking you out, meaning they're probably more qualified than someone that's a cold lead or someone that you're reaching out to. So you should definitely be mess messaging people back if they're messaging you, answering questions, answering and responding to all comments. And um, another thing on the personal level, um, I would say on other platforms, you know, companies and individuals try to keep it more professional, but on social media, you can get more personal in terms of the, what you're sharing. So if you're, let's say a life coach or um, a business coach, maybe on LinkedIn, you're sharing articles that are, uh, you know, posted by Forbes or, or LA Times, but on Instagram or Facebook, you can share more about like your story and get more personal in that way as well. So sharing more about yourself and being a little bit more vulnerable on social media can open up the barrier for people to feel connected to you and, and like really feel that you're sharing your true authentic self. 
Got it. And also, too, I think uh, one thing that's come about uh, recently is is TikTok. I mean, it's been there for a while, but in terms of the wave it's making now, it's huge. Um, I would love for you to kind of compare TikTok to Instagram because at one point Instagram was like the hot thing or whichever and everyone was getting on there. All businesses were getting on there. And now TikTok has come and it's kind of, you know, they're saying, oh, you know, you should get on TikTok too. And some people don't think you can use it for a business. So I think it'd be great if you could do kind of a compare and contrast uh, with TikTok versus Instagram from a business perspective. Okay. So so TikTok just opened up their ad platform and they do have like millions of eyes right now on the platform because any millennial or Gen Z is on TikTok. Um, a lot of businesses are scared of it because they think that it's just for kids and they don't think that there's adults on TikTok, which there definitely are adults on TikTok. Um, but it does, it does depend on the business. So TikTok is a video based platform. So you need to be creating video content that engages people and it doesn't look like a commercial because if it looks too much like a commercial, people will just scroll through it. So it needs to be, it needs to look like it was user generated. Um, the smart brands and companies are actually using user generated content on TikTok as an ad, but it looks like it's a regular TikTok. So there's more that goes into like the video side as opposed to running an ad on Instagram or Facebook, which I would recommend you also make a video, but you can all, you can just use an image or you can use, um, a video you created online. But in terms of businesses and deciding what platform to utilize for your advertising, I would say it depends on your target audience. Like who are you trying to reach and where, which platform are they on? If you're trying to reach um, maybe like parents, you're probably gonna wanna advertise more on Facebook. If you're trying to reach moms, you know, Instagram is a good one. If you're trying to reach Gen Z, TikTok's a great one. So it depends on your audience. What are you selling and where are they online? Got it. And then also, too, um, I think people get worried because they see on TikTok, oh, there's all these challenges and dances and, and even challenges on uh, Instagram as well. What are your thoughts on people getting involved in those types of things uh, without that sort of fear of being on brands? Should, should companies and should CEOs be dancing or CEO <laughs> or founders be dancing on TikTok or, or, or how do they, they kind of stick to their, their, that sort of business side or, or does it all mix together? I think it's fun for CEOs to, to kind of take on the trends on TikTok. I think it, it gives you like good exposure. It shows that you're a real person. You're not just a robot in the t at the top of the company. Um, I wouldn't advise you do any inappropriate dances unless that <laughs> was your brand, but you know, there are some like very sexualized dances on TikTok or just inappropriate things. So I would, I would recommend staying away from those, but there's a lot, a lot of like fun, funny ones that, you know, anyone could do and it's harmless. And I don't think it would, um, it would be bad for any brand. I think it, it really breaks down the brand, shows you that there's people behind the brand. And I think it's a good idea, especially if your target audience is on TikTok. Got it. And, and kind of going back to Instagram a bit, what are some of the biggest mistakes that you see people make in terms of Instagram or even just their social media in general uh, when trying to promote their business? Um, so we kind of covered a couple of these and I would bring them back where it's, it's lack of consistency. Um, it's, it's not being able to engage or not responding. And then for Instagram specifically, I would say it's not trying to grow on Instagram. So some people think that just by posting that they're going to get a bunch of followers and clients, but it doesn't work like that. You actually have to put the effort to grow your account and connect with new people. Got it. And, and you offer a, a, an Instagram program, correct? Or package. Can you give more details about that package and, and how some of the components are really important for your business? Yeah, absolutely. So, so I do full social media management, but when um, the pandemic hit and people's budgets kind of tightened up, um, I wanted to figure out what was really the most important service that they needed for um, kind of a smaller budget. So I asked my clients, like, what's the most important thing to you? And pretty much everyone said the same thing. It was that they wanted to get more leads and they needed to reach more people. So I created a micro package that's just around Instagram growth, specifically to help turn, um, turn those likes into, into leads and turn those leads into clients. So what I help with is, is the growth piece and it's the connecting piece. So if we have, you know, an, an hour strategy call, where we dive into who's your ideal audience, 
who do you want to connect with? My team and I would go into your account and help engage for you so that we can be growing your audience, so that you have a larger following when you post, more people see it. And also you get people like finding your profile. So it's about the exposure. It's about the, the publicity. So if, if you're just posting on your account and you have 200 followers and you're not growing, you're really not utilizing Instagram to its fullest potential. So we help you get between 700 to 1,000 new followers a month that are highly targeted based on your ideal audience. And this service has it's been really, really incredible because it's, uh, it's only $300 a month. And for that, we're getting you, you know, so many new opportunities and leads. And my clients so far absolutely love it. Speaking of the pandemic as well, can you give some advice to some of these businesses who are now struggling um, to kind of make it or struggling even just to find a way to uh, continue to get leads? Uh, I think some strategies from you on that front would be really helpful given your full digital uh, marketing background. Yeah. So, I mean, I think the most important thing that everyone either realized or didn't realize is that you need to be agile and you need to be willing to pivot. So when the pandemic hit, both of my businesses pivoted almost immediately because we realized that the services that we were offering before um, were no longer needed. So that is my, that's the biggest advice that I would give is, is being able to take a step back and assess the situation and make sure that the services or products that you're offering are actually necessary. Because if you're, you can't, if you get a hundred leads and they don't, and nobody buys your service, it probably means that you're not offering something that people want. And so you need to be open to changing your offering. I'm not saying, you know, like a 180 pivot, but you need to pivot slightly so that you can service people or service businesses or sell something that is needed or necessary or people want. Got it. And um, I would love to go into some of the other aspects of your business. Uh, I know that you also mentioned websites and branding. Um, can you talk a little bit about the importance of websites and branding and, um, and things like that? Because I find that a lot of people, uh, they almost downsize the importance of a website and they just kind of have this website, the information is not updated, it's just kind of there. Um, I think if you could express some of the importance of that or why you think it's important would be helpful for people to understand why they need to have all these components uh, running. Yeah, definitely. So the first stage of building a business, from my point of view, is the brand because the brand is going to be the first thing that people see, they're going to remember it or not. Um, they're going to judge you by it, definitely. So having the brand from the beginning, and, and a brand is a lot of things, but for the basis of this conversation, we can say it's like your color scheme, your logos, your vibe, and your message. And the website is um, equally just as, as important because that's where people are going to go to decide if you're credible. So if they go to your website and it's it looks like it's you know 10 years old or it's out of date or the buttons don't work or you don't have some information there, people are automatically going to think that you're not a credible business or a credible website and probably just go on to the next one. Um, also, it's important that your website, not only does it function um, fully, but it functions quickly. So if your website is, takes 20 seconds to load, the person's probably gonna exit by then. So, and in this digital age, you know, especially with, it, with the younger generation getting older, uh, almost everyone is going to be going straight to Google and your website to decide if you're credible rather than giving you a phone call. They're gonna go online to find your phone number. They're gonna go online to find your email. So it's important to have all this information updated, not only on your website, but also on other business directories like Yelp and Google and Facebook, because you're going to be missing out on business and leads if you don't have all the information there in the right places. Yeah, I totally agree with you about site speed as well, because that's one thing that people don't realize that it can affect how many impressions you get. Uh, with If you're doing Facebook ads or Google ads, if your website is slow, it ruins your quality scores and, and things like that, right? Yeah, and, and even besides, yeah, we're getting now more into the technical side. Um, just from the user experience, when you go to a slow site and you, you don't want to wait for it to load, you're going to leave. And by you leaving, it's called a bounce. And when you have a high bounce rate, Google will actually ding you and it will not display your site as high on the Google search results. So now we're getting into like tech side of SEO, which is search engine optimization. But uh, I'm sure everyone can understand that a slow site is frustrating. And um, in addition to that, you know, Google is also penalizing you for having a slow site. And so you mentioned one of the things you usually start with is branding with your, your clients. Can you kind of take us through 
kind of that trajectory or path of importance in terms of starting your business or, or, or getting it off the ground or just kind of getting it organized um, in terms of having the different aspects? Yeah, so, so branding is the, is the first thing we start with. Um, we go into, we have branding workshops, we have a session where we dive into your mission, your ideal audience, you know, we kind of figure out who that target person is, get into the brand colors, design the logo, and essentially like the, the full package, you'd end up with a brand book. So with that brand book, then we can go into stage two, which is your online presence. So we get your website set up, we get your email set up, uh, your social media set up, kind of all the setup stage of everything. And then stage three is um, kind of getting the business running and continuing that maintenance over time. So that would look like um, getting your email automations going, you know, building up that email list, teaching you how to create content for social media, whether you wanted to have your own content strategy and you would develop your own content or you'd want to just outsource it and have somebody handle that for you. So then we get into like that, the ongoing process and we talk about SEO, like is it important for you to be ranking on Google? Do you need to be running Facebook ads? Are you doing calls and need some sort of like calendar system set up to be booking people? Um, and we also, I, I do a lot of business consulting just not as a service, but just as a kind of side side of what I do with marketing. So helping clients create packages, um, figure out their business models, figuring out the best platforms to host your business on, whether you're teaching a course or you're selling, um, you're selling a service or you're selling a product, you know, are you going to be on Shopify? Are you going to be on WordPress? So there's so much behind the scenes that goes into a business from branding to launch. And um, I, I, I love helping businesses you know, figure out that path and figure out the path of least resistance for the most affordable cost as well. Who would you say are some of the, the biggest brands you've worked with or, or even just your biggest accomplishments in general? Um, so I like to work with brands that are starting off as opposed to big brands. Um, so I would, I'd, I think probably the second question is better for me to answer, but sure. <laughs> some big Go accomplishments. Ahead. Um, personally, I would say I would say two come to mind. So one is like just numbers and data. So having a really high ROI on a, on an ad campaign where we had like 4,000% ROI, which is crazy. Nice. nice. And then um, another one would be, we had, we were approached by a startup that wanted us to build an entire platform that we would have probably taken, you know, four to six months to build if we were given our full timeline and they needed it in 10 days. Oh, wow. And, so, <laughs> and I looked at my partner, we looked at each other and we're like, are we going to do this? And we said, all right, we're going to do this. And it was right around the holidays. So, you know, things were kind of slowing down anyway. So we said, okay, family, you're going to have to wait. <laughs> we're going to yep. go all in. And we knocked that, we knocked it out. So it was a, like a, it was kind of like a Netflix for um, working out. And so we had to create a platform, a portal login with subscription services and a full like build out of a website slash portal. So that was a really big accomplishment that we, you know, crunched the timeline and we got it done. Nice. That sounds, and the fact that you sacrificed the holidays sort of, it's like, that just shows the dedication that you have to have for your business, right? Yeah. And it's also fun for us. So we, yeah, you know, it's, 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 we love a challenge, but it's in, but we're doing something that we love. So it was just, um, it was almost like a, it was like a blessing in disguise. You know, it's like, oh gosh, are we going to be able to do this? But then it's like, you know what? It's fun to get through it. And, and we did it. Nice. Uh, so that actually wraps up part one of this episode in part two. We're going to talk about how to grow your followers specifically. I also want to get into uh, your second top platform for getting leads for your business, as well as here are some of your tips for success, as well as dive a little deeper into some of the tools that you use to help your clients get ahead. I think the users would be very interested in that. So if you guys head over to lagoals.com, we'll see you soon.